During the free fly, we only get 48 hours to try ships from each manufacturer before they're gone, so it's easy to get overwhelmed by choice. If you don't want to spend hours playing ship roulette trying to find a ship to suit you, this is your breakdown of Saturday's offerings from Aegis Dynamics. Unlike yesterday's exhibitors, Aegis is a major military manufacturer in the game, so now you've got access to single and multi-crew combat ships and the first two flyable capital ships of the entire event. There's a whole load more in the Aegis Hall, so make sure you grab everything at once. You don't want to waste time on the transport coming back here to grab the ships that you missed. We'll start with all the single seat fighters. First up is the Avenger, and it comes in three different variants, the Titan, the Stalker, and the Warlock. The Stalker's the Bounty Hunter Interdiction variant, comes with a Gatling Cannon, it's got two laser weapons, and it has pre-installed the Prisoner Transport Module, which is a hold full of containment cells for your bounties or prisoners, as well as some living quarters for you. Next up is the Warlock. It's the same airframe, but it trades the cells and all the living space for an EMP generator, and yes, this does currently work on other ships. There's still a bed, but it sits behind the pilot seat, so you can still go to sleep on it, but there's not much room for anything else. Then there's the Titan and the Titan Renegade. These sacrifice all the bells and whistles of the EMP generator for a cargo hold that can hold a SCU. If you're a new player just starting out, I really recommend trying the ship as it is offered in one of the upgraded starter packages. The Gladius is the current combat workhorse of the UEE fleet. It sacrifices any living space or a bed, but it has an absolute focus on dogfighting. As standard, it comes with a Gatling cannon, two laser repeaters, and four missile rack hardpoints. There's also a Gladius Valiant, which, much like the Titan Renegade, is just a few different components. If stealth's more you'll see, then you need to go for the Eclipse. This thing's a stealth torpedo bomber. It carries three size 9 torpedoes, which are a serious risk to capital ships, and you'll make an absolute mess of anything smaller. Just make sure you get the hell out of there afterwards, because the Eclipse is a glass cannon. She's a combat ship, pure and simple, so there's no bed or other interior other than the cockpit. If you're finding this helpful, give the like button a whack, it really does help out. Last in the single seat offerings is the Sabre and the Sabre Comet. The airframes are still built for a reduced signature, but they've got a serious weapon package. You're going to be rocking up with four laser repeaters and four missiles, but bear in mind, it's still a combat ship, so there's no bed, no living space inside. The first of the multi-crew ships is the Vanguard, and this is broken into four variants, all classed as heavy. These are the Warden, Harbinger, Sentinel, and Hoplite. And apart from the Hoplite, they all have room for two crew. Each has four weapons built into the nose, and they all have four further hard points, and each variant uses a slightly different loadout. They also have a man turret, so you and your buddy can fight the ship at the same time, as well as various different combination of missiles. Inside, the Warden has bunk beds, living space, and an engineer station. Where the Warden is a fighter, the Harbinger is a fighter bomber. It has a size 5 torpedo rack inside, along with a little message for who ends up on the receiving end. The Sentinel is an electronic warfare variant. We don't really know much about this gameplay at the moment, because it hasn't yet been implemented in the game. And I'm a massive fan of the Hoplite. It's a dropship, only one crew, but it's got room for a detachment of six marines and an entire rack for all their weapons. If the idea of a World War II bomber in space is your thing, then honestly, you can't do any better than the Retaliator. This thing's got seven crew, and a really nice feature is all the missiles, the torpedoes that it carries, all six size nines, are inside the ship much like you would imagine on a World War II bomber, there's bomb bays, you can walk in and amongst the missiles. As well as that, it's covered in turrets. Five of them, in fact. So the pilot just flies. You've got five crew in your turrets defending the retaliator. And then a bombardier making sure the torpedoes hit their target. And if you're on a free fly, then you absolutely have to try the capital ships. 
they're what makes Star Citizen different. It's the idea that a ship needs a group of players in order to function effectively. The combat capital ship currently available is the Hammerhead, 115 meters long, two decks, and enough room and accommodation for nine crew. It's got six turrets, each of which has four laser repeaters on. It's designed to absolutely massacre fighter-sized vessels. Inside, there's a lot of exploring to be done. There's passageways, corridors, escape pods. There's a dedicated engine space, a dining area, even a captain's cabin. It's probably some of the best group play in a ship available in the game at the moment. Words don't do the Reclaimer justice. You'll figure that out when you go to the Expo Hall and see it for yourself. It is huge. It's a top-end salvage ship with a huge claw that sits under the chin that basically reaches out, grabs salvage, drags it into the ship and then munches it up in order to turn it into usable materials. It has room for five crew and unfortunately all of the gameplay loops required for this at the moment aren't yet in the game so if you're getting it it's just going to be something that you fly around. That said you can see where it's all going. There are tractor beam operator seats that will drag the salvage to the ship, UAV drone operators that will use drones to go and get valuable bits of salvage from the wreckage and the entire interior of it is modelled on the Nostromo, the ship from the first Alien movie. If that doesn't get you excited for it, I don't know what is. Um, I really like it and I can only recommend that you check this thing out, spawn it in and go walk around it for yourself. So do you think you'll enjoy capital ship gameplay? Or will you enjoy killing them more? And what's your favourite Vanguard version? I'd love to know. Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you soon.